and welcome to the Family Corner. This is an opportunity for you to continue the learning that you started in religious education on Sunday. So gather your family together. This is something that you can all watch together and discuss. And we're going to talk about this weekend's gospel. Now, um, well, first let's start in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I bet, if you're like me, there's times when you've thought you're more important than another person. Can you think of a time when you thought you're better than another person, you're more important than another person? We've all probably thought that at one point or another in our lives. Today's Gospel gets us thinking about what Jesus thinks about that. So let's listen carefully to today's gospel and we'll discuss it. Of course, before we, uh, before we proclaim the gospel, before we listen to the gospel, we always sing a very special song. Would you join me in singing the Alleluia? Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. And remember the special prayer we pray here? We make the sign of the cross on our foreheads and pray that the Lord may always be in our minds, on our lips, that the Word of God might always be in our lips, that we might always speak the Word of God and over our hearts that the Word of God might always be in our hearts. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, will you do us a favor? Jesus asked them what they wanted, and they answered, When you come into your glory, please let one of us sit at your right side and the other at your left. Jesus told them, You don't really know what you're asking. Are you able to drink from the cup that I must soon drink from, or be baptized as I must be baptized? Yes, we are, James and John answered. Then Jesus replied, You certainly will drink from the cup from which I must drink and you will be baptized just as I must. But it is not for me to say who will sit at my right side and at my left. That is for God to decide. When the ten other disciples heard this, they were angry with James and John. But Jesus called the disciples together and said, you know that those foreigners who call themselves kings like to order their people around. And their great leaders have full power over the people they rule. But don't act like them. If you want to be great, you must be the servant of all the others. And if you want to be first, you must be everyone's slave. The Son of Man did not come to be a slave master, but a slave who will give his life to rescue many people. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia! Alleluia! Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thank you for listening so well. Now, based on what you just heard in the Gospel, do you think that Jesus acts like he's better than other people? 
He certainly has reason to. After all, he is the Son of God, and he's the Son of Mary. So he's both God and human. But Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus always demonstrates what we call humility. In this regard, it's important to imitate or to act like Jesus. We should be humble and act and not act like we're above others. We are all loved by God equally. When we follow the teachings of Jesus, we try to imitate what Jesus taught and show love and kindness because that's what disciples do. That's what followers of Jesus do. So let's look at what James and John, two of Jesus' closest disciples, asked of Jesus in the Gospel passage. Do you remember what they asked of Jesus? Right, they asked when Jesus gets to heaven if they could sit on his right and on his left. In other words, they wanted to be the most important disciples in the kingdom of God. What did other, the other disciples, the other ten disciples, what did they think of what James and John asked? Right, they were pretty ticked off. They were surprised that James and John would ask this because they were trying to be better than the other disciples. Maybe they thought, hmm, I wish I had asked that. Maybe they wanted to be the most important disciples. There's really three messages in this gospel uh, in, in how Jesus responds to the disciples' questions. If we wish to gain eternal life, we must sacrifice. We might need to do something that we don't want to do. Sometimes we will need to make decisions about what to do that won't be the same as what our friends or society wants us to do. We will need to decide how we want to stay connected to Jesus and to God's love. For example, if we decide not to stay connected to Jesus by praying or coming to Mass regularly or reading about Jesus in the Bible or serving in God's name, do you think we will continue to feel connected and grow in our faith if we don't go to Mass or read about Jesus in the Bible or serve? So James and John were told that they needed to make some sacrifices, and so do we. And next, Jesus tells his disciples that there is no rank or status among the souls in heaven. All remain equal and loved by God. Grace, or the free gift of love from God, comes to all who hope in God's kindness. We don't earn it. Grace is a free gift from God because God wishes to stay connected to us forever. Jesus tells his disciples that if they wish to be leaders, they need to put the needs of others first. This is called servant leadership. A servant leader thanks God for his or her gifts and asks for God's help in using those gifts so that many people are able to feel and see the love of God present in their lives and on earth. So, I'm going to play a song for you. It's called The Servant Song. And it's about being a servant, uh, being a disciple of Jesus Christ. And while I'm playing the song, I'd like for you to discuss with your parents a couple of questions. How was Jesus a servant leader? What are some ways that you see in stories about Jesus, about how he was a leader by being a servant? And after you list some ways that Jesus was a servant leader, can you be a servant leader? What are some ways that you can be a servant leader? Take some time to discuss that. Let 
came up with lots of great ideas of ways that you can be a servant leader. So we're going to finish up for today, but I'm going to give you something to do after we finish up. If you go to your Promise magazine that you received in religious education, go to pages three and four. And since you're, you've come up with such great ideas of ways that you can be a servant leader, I'm going to give you a medal. Uh, a badge of honor to show that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. So you'll notice on uh, ba both pages 4 and pages 3 that there's a big circle. And the circle has these words on page 3. Jesus says, people who help others are important. I am important. I can help. So uh, the, way, the things that you just talked about are ways that you can be a servant leader and help other people. So on page four, you can write, it says, I am, and you write your name here. And then you cut this out, and you can attach it to a piece of string and wear it around your neck to show that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. That'll be a lot of fun. So thanks for joining me today. And I hope to see you again this Sunday. And in the meantime, God bless you and be sure that I'm praying for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.